Sit back and look at me. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? This is your girl Erica from the Classy Climb Vlog. I'm here with Terry Ijioma. Uh, we're coming here to you. How are you going to end this decade? So you know the routine when you guys come in, drop your city, state, hit the like button. You know we're in Dallas, Texas right now. And Terry, introduce yourself to the audience. Hey guys, my name is Terry Gioma from itradeandtravel.com. I quit my job as an assistant principal to travel around the world and trade stocks full time. And now that's what I teach other people to do. How do they reach their, their goals using the stock market? So at the ending of the year, you already know September and October are wow for stocks. What are some of the things people should be looking forward to? Actually, I'm super excited because we just recently heard from the president that there was a trade deal with China, at least phase one of a trade deal. But the momentum from positive trade news will actually hopefully take the market up the last quarter. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty excited about stocks doing well. So some people who have been on the fence, they're like, oh, maybe next year I can get the stocks. What are your recommendations to them? Yeah, like some of the biggest myths that I hear are oh, Terry, I don't have enough money. But really, you don't need to start with a whole bunch, especially when you're first learning. Mm -hmm. I would say put $500 in, then you can start practicing on, on a simulator with fake money, and then you can put more money into your account. And then I hear, oh, Terry, we're, well, it's going to take me too much time. But it really won't take a lot of time. When you're a good trader, you usually trade for maybe two hours to four hours max a day, mm -hmm. and you can make your weekly goals. Um, another thing I hear is, oh, Terry, well, I always hear about the buy and hold method. Uh, Warren Buffett says buy and hold. But especially now with like low commission rates and stuff like that, you could get in and out of the stock market and make money right now for your current bills. And it's not a one or the other. Right. So let's be very clear. Like you yeah. still can in your 401k, you still can in other accounts just have money that you've invested in monthly dividend stocks and just let it sit. Yes, you can. You can still do that. It doesn't stop what you're doing. Diversify. Yeah, it, but you'll just have that account that you actually trade in. Yes, because there's always going to be some goals that you need money for, whether that's paying off debt, um, buying a new car. Like There's just things where you need some money now, and mm -hmm. you can use stocks for that. JG, where we're? Get <laughs> cash now. Get money now. <laughs> <Get money now. laughs> um, so... <laughs> You guys, Terry's course, this cohort, fall cohort starts with tomorrow? Tomorrow. Starts yes. tomorrow. October 14th. She usually kicks them off with like a live. She's talking to them in there. They're getting one-on-one -on -one kind of hand holding. Yeah. And so your, your course is kind of like weekly, right? Like you're doing weekly lives. Yes, they do. They have online curriculum. So if mm -hmm. somebody can't watch it or is wondering, like, I'm really busy. Do I have time? The course is all online. So you can... Like you can go in whenever you have time and watch the curriculum, but just as an additional support, I do weekly coaching calls. And so that's what's starting tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what I want to tell people is this weekend, me and Terry did, you probably seen it from Instagram. We did an event um, yeah. and it was a packed house. It was super fun. Uh, I think a lot of people were like shocked about how they were interested in stocks. Like they're like, Oh, I never thought about stocks, but it's yeah. something that, it's so common. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, go ahead. I think when they realized how much they had to put up front to buy a real estate property mm -hmm. and then what they could do with that money, they were they were a bit blown away. Like, okay, I do need to put $30,000 down to buy a property. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, if I put that in the stock market and Terry's teaching me how to do like 1% a day, that's $300 a day I could be making on my 30000 versus just putting it into a house and getting $300 a month in your rent. You know, like it's just a different way to invest. Right, and there's a thing where I always talk about fast money, slow money. Mm -hmm. I would put this in a category of stocks, fast money, slow money. Do you know what I mean? True. What's True. up, Miss Henson? Wonderful information on Saturday. I'm glad you enjoyed. Hey, guys. Uh, what training do I need to purchase from you to learn how to buy one truck? I have about 10K available to invest. So chosen one, probably the best thing for you would probably be a phone consult. And if we have any Doug or any of the guys in here who are moderators could drop that information, that'd probably be helpful. Um, if all else fails, you can go to Hood Estates, grab their course. But sometimes people have questions afterwards. Yeah, um, yeah someone said they're a prepper. So what's up? <laughs> all right. And Hello, hey, I'm 20 minutes away from Dallas, Bedford. Oh, nice. Hey. What's That's up from California? And hey, Gloria. Houston, How you Texas. Doing? Okay. Nice to see all you guys. 
Good stuff. So yeah, Saturday was really good. I was proud of the event. I was glad I got busy and booked. Um, Casey said, "Have my consult. Very helpful. Thank you so much. I appreciate that." Yeah. The event was really good, by the way. I think everybody was excited to see us in the flesh. They were like, "Oh, you guys are real." So real people. That was yeah. That was nice. One of the guys told me that he didn't realize I was so short. I am tall. They, it's funny as if they Y'all actually see taller. Cousin Nita, because everybody thinks Cousin Nita's like some 5'10 <laughs> giant. And then they get there, they're like, why are you so short? <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Uh, Pocky is actually very tall compared to all of us. He's oh, like really? six foot one. So uh, Andre Hatchet is six foot one, but every time somebody else is six foot one in the room, they be like, it's just so funny. You guys are hilarious <laughs> when we meet you in person. Yeah. So, um, I think the best thing about it is getting accountability to push through this final. This is the end of a decade, you guys. Like, I don't think people understand, like, yeah. 2020 is a whole nother decade. decade. Yeah. Like, what were you doing this whole yeah. decade? When you Okay, when you think about your 10 years, like, where were you, if you can remember, in 2010, like, 10 years ago? I'm pretty sure I was in North Carolina, the coffee shop. I remember being upset because, uh, excuse me, in Charles, Charles, Charlotte, North Carolina, all my friends had started really investing in, in real estate because mm-hmm. the houses instead of being 35000 yeah. were like 25000 And so they had enough money at auctions and different things to just buy. Yeah. Right. And so I'm sitting there like, I've used up all my inheritance from my father passing and my grandma passing. Oh, no, I can't invest. And so I know the feeling of sitting on the sidelines and be like, well, I'm going to wait. And then you just completely miss out on the opportunities. Mm-hmm. I, th- I feel like our our generation, like that's a blessing for us. Like mm-hmm. we literally were there during the housing crash. Mm-hmm. We knew what it felt like because I know like I was four years out of college. I didn't have the money to actually mm-hmm. invest like I wanted to, even though I saw the opportunity. Mm-hmm. So now that it's coming up again, I'm like, now I finally have some money to put aside mm-hmm. for if it happens again. Yeah. I'll be ready this time. Yeah. And I think also this time <clears throat> you have a plan, work the plan. And then as things change. Just get yeah. more to it, right? And yeah. that's what's super helpful is you guys know what waiting and missing on opportunities looks like in this decade. You know, before. it's right. happened before. We've seen you, it. You've had your kids grow up. Some people came mm-hmm. to our event yesterday. There were several people at our event who were like 40 years old. Their kids are out of the house. They can do anything. Yeah. They can go invest stocks. They can buy trucks. They can do real estate. They can do anything they want. And that's the mindset I want people to leave with. It's like, mm-hmm. you do anything you want. It's up to you. can do attitude. Yeah. But like, really, you can do it. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Doug. Oh, and hey, Annette. Welcome. <laughs> She's like, I can't wait for classes to begin. Yeah, our Again, classes begin Annette's tomorrow. Again, worth is an example <laughs> yeah. of how much your life can change in a year. It can completely change in a whole year if you wanted yeah. to. Yeah. So, so what are some things that people should be on the lookout for this fall? Because most people are already like Hallmark Channel, Christmas trees, yeah. pumpkins, Thanksgiving. And something I told them at the event, I'm like, right now is like prime times for tax liens. Right. Prime times for... All this yeah. busy, all the business side consumers are ready. Like ready. The, the Fed just announced that they're going to lower interest rates again, and they've already lowered it twice recently. So coming into this fall, now's the time because you're going to have lower interest rates. You can get loans on things. If you have been stocking that house that you've been interested mm-hmm. in, like you're going to have a time to get it at a lower mortgage rate. So yeah, like that's one thing you should really be looking at going into this fall. The Fed is lowering interest rates. Then you have. <laughs> I said my burnt orange shirt is nice. Well, thank you. Oh, well, oh, I was gonna say like um, UT was OU, but they didn't win. Oh, there she goes. Start oh, crap. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Trevor um, May, for the five dollars <laughs> super chat. We're just gonna ignore her comment. <laughs> uh, Las Vegas, what's up? Any recommendations for contractors in KC? Real talk, I'm always gonna support Texas because I'm a Texan girl. So hey. Um. But yeah, so this person said, wow, I had not given it any thought. Where did the year go? Now I'm thinking, where did the decade go? Yes. Ten years ago. What were you doing ten Ten years years ago? ago. People in the comments put in there. What were y'all doing ten years ago? Yeah. If you can remember back in 2009, 2010, what was your life like? So for me, like I graduated college in 2006. Mm -hmm. So it was four years out of college. I was in my second job so like trying to prove myself in my second job because after that I had like one job at coming out of college and had quit and so this was like my second one and I was trying to put on a good impression I remember that I was like working my butt off 
Um, the housing crash had come, so I remember wanting to invest in a house, but then still not having enough money. So, so I was looking at all these great deals and still couldn't really do it. Um, what else was going on in my life? Boy news has stayed the same. The same, same thing. I was single then, single now. That hasn't. <laughs> Random. Like, oh, you know, I'm single then, single now. Random, oh, random news. Yeah. I guess that hasn't changed. Family was doing good. Mm-hmm. Trying to just think through what that was. Like, I was in Chicago, so I think I had just bought, oh, that was a big deal. I did buy my first investment property because I thought that Chicago was going to get the Olympics. Mm-hmm. And so I had, I had bought a property. It was right above a liquor store, so... Okay, this I just is made sure. all, but I I made bad decisions. Except I think Kendra would probably think it was a good decision because mm-hmm. she's like, you know, what's the hood? It's gonna turn around. Eleven years later, it's finally starting to sure. gentrify. You were we were earlier. Early. I was super early. Like, I was a little bit too early. too early. Yeah, she was like, I could have missed some of that. Um, <laughs> interest rates are low, but prices are close to all time high. Again, that's one of those things. True. It's true, but again, when people think, oh, next year prices will be lower. But guess what? No one's approving you for a loan. Right. It, it's Money will. If, if, if it is a recession and and prices do come down, also money will get tighter. So it'll be harder to get a loan then. Um, potentially, though, you could always get that house now with the low interest rates and then refinance again if it comes down. But I don't. I don't know if that really would work right. But you know, just in terms oh, of timing. A lot of people are trying to time the market, and you just can't. Yeah. You really can't. I was getting out of graduate school. Someone said they were a sophomore in high school. This person said they were hanging on the block with the wrong crowd. <laughs> Glad you got rid of that. All right. I hope your life has changed. Dorian Wright, should I fix my personal credit before starting business and building business credit? You should always be working on your credit. It is a lifelong thing. But credit, again, is just the tool. It's just a tool. Like when people tell me, oh, man, my credit, my credit. It's a tool. It's a tool to get leverage that you get uh, your house or you get vehicles with or you yeah. get you know what I mean it's just a tool now if you say if you told me Erica I am working in a government job with a clearance I'm telling you fix it right now because they can take your clearance they have mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you're a risk you're a risk it definitely impacts some things mm-hmm. having nice good credit can help you in lots of ways but it is a tool it's just a tool mm-hmm. yeah so um there's a book called living well with bad credit that guy has made a ton of money that book has sold I'm pretty sure like a million copies I mean it's like, just what's his top point his top points are uh, just finding alternatives like renting houses from people with, you know, for rent signs in the yard, just different things, just okay. different little okay. neat things where you can go to certain, get better deals, going to credit unions for car loans or buying a car mm. for cash, for an auction. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, it's not the end of the world, but most people just think like this. I go to job, I have my job, I go to it, I go to the dealership, I say, you run my credit. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. people are so... Mm-hmm. Single mind. Yes, they can't think of creative ways to go around stuff. Yeah, that's essentially what the book is. Okay, okay. Which I thought was good. Ideally, you would want to have a higher credit score mm-hmm. so you can get lower interest rates. But if you don't, there's some things to work with. Is what you're saying. So. so Jacqueline said, 20, 2009 found I had lung cancer. Oh man. Graduated from college in 2010. Ten years cancer free. Ooh, congratulations! Congratulations! congratulations. Look at life though. Right? Like it sounds You look like, at it differently too. Yeah, like like she had a place where it was like she could have died. Mm-hmm. But now she's still here mm-hmm. ten years later. I feel like you look at life different when you know that life is short and when something like that has happened to you. I had a friend who had um five years ago had she had what do you call it in the intestines? Um, Intestinal cancer? Yeah, I guess that's what you call it. Prostate? No. She had like a polyp, but it had went like, it was like this, and it was like, Ooh. it, it could have um, metastasized. Exposed. So okay. they had to cut and stuff. And she's just a different person now, five years ago. She's different, different. Like her lifestyle, where she yeah. eats everything. Like And mindset. mindset. Like stuff like that. She's like, I'm just so glad yeah. to be here. Right. You know, like, yeah. I'm just glad to be here. That, that actually was kind of my testimony. Mm-hmm. I started trading when my friend died because mm-hmm. I just realized life was just too short. Yeah. And when you know that life is too short and you know that like, hey, I could die today, then you you live fearless. Like you live mm-hmm. with less fear. You're just ready to take the risk. You're ready to like do whatever it takes because you know that, hey, tomorrow's not guaranteed. So, yeah. And I also think some people, um, no, I don't exactly. Some people have a, oh, I'm trying to think. I got time, you know, I got time. Yeah. I got time. Why, why rush? We got time. When the kids yeah. get out of the house, when the kids go to college, 
when the grandkids are older. Like, but that is not guaranteed, guaranteed at all. At all. At all. And things change. Mm -hmm. Like, like people do that with my course. They're like, oh, I'm gonna get it next year. And I'm like, like oh. what? Is it? Is it guaranteed it's gonna be around next year? <laughs> you get it now. Yeah. But well, that's just with everything. Everything. Just everything. Everything. Or uh, people putting people in the friend zone. He'll be there. I don't know. He won't. No, he will. He will have a, a wife and, and a three kids next year. Goodbye, right? <laughs> or, you know, I just, I remember this guy saying he knew this girl and him should get married. And he's like, well, I'm not ready. I'm not, I ain't no rush. And she, she was gone. She was gone. Mm -mm. So, no. the thing I, <laughs> no way. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> that's a blessing. <laughs> yeah. Well, at the end of the day, like, mm -hmm. uh, the two things that we have today is basically Terry's stock course, uh, her code that she has for us is life skills. Mm -hmm. But it's also if you click that link, I put Xmas stocks because everybody's already in the Christmas mode. Get it, get it, right, get, right. it. get you some money for the end of the year. Get it, get it, get right? it. Right, and then I put <laughs> Bitly Twenty Twenty Dream is in there, and that's the bundle. So usually it would cost you eight hundred dollars, but it actually costs you more than eight hundred dollars. It's like a nine hundred dollar deal, but I cut it in half for four fifty. Oh, you got the funding. For, yeah, it's this is gonna be the only bundle for the rest of the year. <laughs> so Merry Christmas, right? <laughs> so the, it's got the funding course in it. It's got the uh, how to start an investment group in it. It's got the tax liens in it and professional freedom from the basement. Oh, that's like everything. That's everything. That's a thousand dollar change. You know? yeah. It's like, there's your gift for the rest of the year. That is a good that's Christmas it. gift, guys. You guys got to get that. Because they think I'm joking when next year going to be like, where are you Go. South Africa. We go. Italy. Bali. <laughs> out of here. Uh, life is too short in nature. I want to relocate and purchase a multifamily and house act. That's Thank good. you both. That's good. Uh, Amika said, uh, in next Oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Index fund versus <laughs> ETF versus active mutual fund. Which one would you do? Um, so actually, I invest in individual stocks. So when you're looking at the index fund, you're looking at the whole markets, like the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, um, the Dow Jones. So you're looking at funds that have like several stocks in them to dictate the, how the whole economy is going. I think that's okay, especially if you're trading in options because they expire every two days versus weekly. So that's okay. ETFs are cool. I have some right now that I'm investing in, especially for like the semiconductor field. Instead of investing in just one of the semiconductors like NVIDIA or AMD, I like the SOXL ETF because it is overall, it, it covers all the semiconductors. Um, and real quick disclaimer, I am not telling you what to do. This is just me giving out what I do. Um, invest at your own risk. Um, mutual funds, I'm not really a mutual fund girl. I definitely am more of an individual stock person. So to answer your question, I would look at an ETF, see what stocks are in there, and then actually go pick the top stocks out of that ETF and invest in them individually. Um, I look at charts and that's how I, that's how I invest. Yeah. I think a lot of times when we're talking about mutual funds and ETFs and index funds, a lot of people are trying to set it and forget it. Mm-hmm. And, and honestly, at this point in the game, you yeah. need to be in the game. You need to be watching, especially with all the volatility that we've had this year. Um, even like I said, the China deal came out yesterday and we had this big pop of the Dow went up 500 points versus there was a, another day recently where we had dropped a lot because of China, China uh, trade war things. So there's just a lot of volatility in the market and it's good to be on top of it. Well, and also, two tiers teaching you a skill that a lot of young people, like a lot of young guys coming out of college, are learning how to trade stocks and they're spending their afternoons two to four hours at a time mm -hmm. trading, making some money, and then going on about their day. Right. And you can do like your research. You can do even mm -hmm. your research at night. And for mm -hmm. me, my research is like looking at charts, but then you can set alerts in there. And then during the day, just check your cell phones. So you don't have to even be watching it all day. You don't have to do it all day, all mm -hmm. night. I think that's what people think. They're going to be tied to a computer right. while their kids are running around in the background and they just can't live their life. So that's a myth. For Total sure. Myth. And yeah. and here's the thing. Hey, what's up, Yusef? <laughs> what's up from Brazil? Um, if we, okay, wait. So I've been trying to travel. So Yusef, if we come to Brazil, do you have like a hangout where we could come? Can you give us a hookup? Just wondering. Want to throw that out there. He's been down there for years. He should have some kind of hookup. What's up? Oh. <laughs> um, I think I think a thing too is short bits. Short bits. What's the that? VIX? Oh. So the VIX is so someone said in here short the VIX. So the VIX is a fear fear factor for the market. Yeah. So it says like if we think that there's going to be a recession soon, the VIX will go up. If not, then it'll go down. Um, if you're shorting the VIX, you're assuming that the VIX will go down. 
that's because people are excited about this China trade deal and they're thinking that we'll be okay. So their fear factor is going down. So shorting the VIX would make you some money. Okay. Natalie Grant, Atlanta Natalie, facts life changing, eight years cancer free. Congratulations. My decade will end with me, my first rental property. Woo I owe it all to Erica's mastermind meeting in LA and taking her friend of girls. That's so wonderful. Congratulations. Kaiser Sosa. What's your name? <laughs> the internet name, but thank you for that. Um, go ahead, read those. Okay, so the these are ticker symbols. So T V I X. So I think that might be a T VIX and Dust D U S T are my go to at ETS every every week. What's up, everybody? So great. Those are wonderful ETFs. Um, again, I'm not an ETF girl. I usually do individual stocks, but if an ETF is working for you, go for it. It trades like a stock, so you can still read a chart to figure out the best time to get in and out. So good stuff. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so listen. There's no, I'm not going to say there's any right or wrong way. A lot of you are used to, hey, I work a job, a nine to five. I just mm -hmm. want to sit some money over here, buy and hold and leave it. And I'm okay with that. I'm get, yeah. But just remember, you can also learn this skill to have you some active income. Yeah. And, and see, this is what, this is how I would go about if somebody wanted to do a buy and hold. Mm -hmm. I learned the skill set of becoming a more active trader. So I learned the skill set of reading charts. Mm -hmm. And even if you do decide, OK, I really like Apple stock. I'm going to buy and hold it forever. You can just make strategic moves like Apple just hit an all time high. That's a good time to sell the stock. So you might sell it right now. And then right before earnings, it comes down a bit. You get into it a little lower. You still are trading Apple for the long time or long term. But just you're able to be more strategic about it. And you don't have to move it all the time. Like you could have held it in there for most of the year, 10 months. But now that it's gotten to all time highs, make a couple moves, save you some money, make some extra money. Like it's just a skill set that will be really helpful throughout your life. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know. I, Can you look yeah. at the comments? Yeah. So, because <laughs> it's, it's hopping. Okay. Relocating from Alaska to New York City. DJ, aren't you in the military? Any insight on investing in real estate or otherwise in such a high cost area? Civil servant, stable income, still here. Now, DJ, this is what I told you last time, six months ago. You should have already been investing in North Carolina or Virginia. Yeah, she does a lot in North Carolina. You should have already been investing. You can't wait till like now the military is moving again or now I'm moved again. Like you have to be able to have that income off to the side, invest, and keep going. Nice. What about now? North Carolina is where you like for tax liens too, right? Or is that tax a different place? Mm -hmm. okay. South Carolina is better for tax liens. Okay. I think at the end of the day, though, if you're really saying you want to be focused on real estate, you can't let the dictation of you being moved. That's why property mm -hmm. managers exist. Mm -hmm. So you can go live your life yeah. and still have that investment back in another state. Yeah. I'm pretty sure DJ is who we talked to before in Alaska. Got it. And I, I co-sign with that. Like yeah. Mine is in Chicago. Yeah, go you live just, your life. You, yeah. You have to take else. that money invest and go see it. you like, mm -hmm. keep on going with your life. Yeah. Hi, Terry. Courage doing yours. I day trade. Hey, and the E-mini. She just cut me off. Did you oh, I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead, finish. No, you she says, it. I day trade the E-mini e SP. I think you're talking about the E-mini SPY, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with your strategy. Yay, that's awesome. So what she's saying, guys, is that she is trading um, an ETF. And, and the SPY, though, is like an index. She's trading an index, but with my strategy, because she can look at the charts and see when to get in and out. So good stuff. All right. Christopher Catchings. Can I use my stocks to purchase a property or get a loan without liquidating? Yes. OK, great. So there's a couple of things to this question. First is the can I use my stocks to purchase a property? Totally. Um, I as I paid off all of my debt this year using stocks like I had 17,000 of student loans. I just strategically every time I made some money. You use that money. You can transfer it to your bank account. Use that money to pay off my loans. Um, you would do the same thing for purchase of property. Whatever that down payment is, then you use some of the money from stocks and move it over to the account where you want to save for that down payment. So totally you can use stocks to, to pay for that. Um, and then in terms of getting a loan without liquidating, yes, a lot of um, companies now will give you a loan against it's called a margin loan against your stock investment. So say, for example, I'm invested with Merrill Lynch and I'm invested in um, this, this is kind of a big number. Let's just say $10,000. I'm going to say $100,000. 
but I have $10,000 worth of Amazon stock. Instead of selling the stock, I can ask Merrill Edge or Merrill Lynch to give me a loan against that stock, and they will give you a loan to go use to purchase something else. So ask them about a margin loan. All right. I like that. Good answer. Oh, look at y'all cutting up already. Dorian Wright. Erica, are you single? Dorian Wright. <laughs> what you doing? This is a video. Hi, she fine. Terry, do you think Bitcoin is a good investment to hold? <laughs> Next question. Oh, so you went ahead and moved past that mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I personally don't invest in cryptocurrency. I don't do cryptocurrency. I don't do Forex. I'm strictly stocks and options trader. Um, I personally don't like Bitcoin because there's not enough data on it. And I, I use charts. So whenever the volumes are low, the stock, the price of Bitcoin moves really fast and it doesn't really have enough data to be a good trading option for me. I like to do things that are high reward, low risk. So, no, sorry, I'm not a Bitcoin person. Hey, hello from Calgary. I was just in Banff. Uh, thank you, Apple Mac 5. And too. I will be going back to Banff. Love your energies. Thank you, ladies. You see how she just don't even need to cut me off. <laughs> I like Terry that. knows what she is talking about. Her <laughs> method of trading is very stable. Thank you. There's that. Does your course go over RSI? Um, no, it doesn't. So I don't use very many indicators when I'm trading. I just look at charts and then I'm trying to figure out where are the big banks like Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs, where are they buying and then where are they selling? And you can look at formations in a candlestick chart and be able to figure that out. And once you know, OK, the banks are buying here and selling here, then you just follow along. I'm going to buy where the banks are buying and I'll sell where the banks are selling. And that's how you can make some pretty good money. All right, next one. Mr. Shelley, hello, pro style. How do you manage capital gains tax? So capital gains are just the same. Well, when you're trading short term trade, so that's any trade that you sell before 12 month period, you get um, tax like regular income. So it'd be as if you had a, a side hustle and you got a W-2, it's just tax like regular income, or you got a raise or you had a bonus, all of that you would just put into your taxes and it'd be tax like regular income. There won't be some super high additional tax put on it. Um, I think people get confused because if it's a, a stock that you hold more than 12 months, you only have to pay like 10 to 15% tax on it. But Hey guys, like if you're making more money, you shouldn't be afraid to, to pay your regular income tax. Y'all be trying to do all this trickery with Uncle Sam now. Come on now. Mm -mm. Hey, yo, pay your fare. Go on in there. No. Nah. <laughs> appreciate the response. I'm a civilian, so blow rent money at this new position in New York, but follow my plan to invest in NC. All right, DJ. Nice. Um, good. Uh, the real estate investment groups I go to in Philly don't know you, Erica. Can you recommend someone or come here? Oh, man. Listen. There is a Women Invest in Real Estate. Let me pull that up. It's about to go down. It is a conference, which you might not know. It's called the Wire Conference. Um, I don't know Philly. much about. It's the third year in a row they've been doing it. So let me tell you. Let me see. Uh, women in Real Estate. That's what it is. I'm trying to get it and pull it from the phone. Whenever someone says, let me see, I always think about this old lady that used to live with my grandmother. She, al she always would say, let me see, let me see, let me see. <laughs> she could say it three times in a row. Let me see, let me see, let me see. So, yeah. So Asia, Asia is going to be there. You're going to have Asia Selden there. You're going to have... Give me some more info. Let's do this Facebook. Hi, Asia. <laughs> Pull it up. Tripping. So, again, if you're in Philly, I always recommend you find people in your marketplace. Huh? So the people that are going to be at this event, if it'll give me everybody's name. And thank you, Everything by John, who said, love you guys, always motivating us. Love that. I can't even pull up the right thing, but it looks like it's November 16th on a Saturday. I know Asia's going to be in it. I know Aisha Selden's going to be there. Um, Ivy, the investor. There's a lot of people in Philly. Yay, there. go Courtney. I was so, going to say shout yeah. out to Courtney, too. There's going to be a lot of people there. And I know it's women in real estate, but it's probably a great event you could go to and find somebody who you could work with there. Thank you, everything. Bye, John. How often are dividends paid out in dividend paying stocks? Any good dividend paying stocks you like? That's too, that's too much. That's too, <laughs> too, that's too many questions in one thing. Super chat that. 
Um, at the end of the day, I go to dividends.com. Mm -hmm. I review what's important for me. You guys see me drop tidbits on Instagram all the time. I had got kind of excited to have like a dividend stock paying me every month. Yeah. And so I started doing this thing where I got certain stocks that paid me every, you know, oh, every awesome. day or every week in the month. So, yeah. I mean, there's little games you can play with yourself, but it just encouraged me to invest more. Yeah. So again, that's another buy and hold position type thing. And, so, if, and if someone wants to look it up, the CNBC app is free and you can put in a watch list of companies. And when you go into each company, it'll tell you their earnings date and the date that they pay out dividends. So that would be a good place to look. CNBC app. Mm -hmm. And I will say also, some people may want to know around this question when earnings happen. Once a quarter at the beginning of each quarter, so it's like January, April, July, um, and then October this month, every quarter, the companies announce earnings. And that's another good time to be like getting into stocks and seeing when things moving, when things are moving. Okay, and then Love says, is ground, is ground Floor a great place to start investing? Yes, mm -hmm. it's definitely a great place. Especially, like, here's the thing. If you don't have any money yet, try to learn a skill set. Yeah. So learn the skill set of how to invest right now, even when you have small amounts. That way, when you do get more money, you'll already have the skill set. The worst thing is to have a lot of money but not know what to do with it. So learn the skill set now. Okay, how do I read charts? How do I pick good companies? How do I protect my risk? Learn that stuff now, and then as you get more money, you'll be able to make it work. Want me to read it? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, next comment from Apple Mac says: One tip to get around the PDT rule, the pattern day trader rule, is to open multiple accounts with different brokers. Plus, Terry, have you told them about there's zero commissions now, so it costs less to trade? Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me to tell people. So yes, yeah, so we had last week, or I think the week before, there were some big announcements that Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade, and E-Trade all went to zero permit, zero commission fees. E-Trade. Zero e -trade. dollar commission fees. E-Trade. Then e -trade. Um, we have some of the more robust brokers like Mine, TradeStation, that also went down to zero percent commission fees. So you can get into trading a lot, a lot easier now. But here's what I want to tell you. Last year in the earnings, over 8 million people opened accounts with E-Trade and Robinhood. But Forbes says that 95% of traders are not going to be successful. So that means that over 7 million people, and I'm being generous, but over 7 million of those people who opened accounts lost money and didn't know what they were doing. So I still say, even if there's 0% commissions, learn how to trade correctly. Then you're not just throwing money in there trying to see what happens like a lot of people are doing. You can actually make some money with, with that. So, Okay, hello from San Francisco traveling today. And we're doing a short show today, you guys. Thank you for 150 of you all being here. Make sure you hit the like button. Yeah. But I actually have a dinner engagement to go to. So, <laughs> oh, um, oh, wait, one other thought. Some, um, on that Apple, Apple Mac had asked me about pattern day trading. So if you are a pattern day trader, which means that you get into a stock and out of a stock within the same day, more than three times a week, the bank will require yes. you to have $25,000 in your account. Say that again. Slow okay. down. Slow down. So a pattern day trader means that you make a actual day trade, which means that you get into a stock and get out of the same stock within the same day. That's a day trade. But if you do that more than three times a week, it's called the pattern day trader. And the government requires, and this is no matter what brokerage you're uh -huh. in, the government requires that you have $25,000 in your account. What the comment was saying is, well, if you make trades in different brokerage accounts, <laughs> then you can avoid that rule. No. That is one way. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is a lot of times if you're, if you're trading correctly and you're looking at where are the banks getting in and the banks getting out, it doesn't happen in one day. So you actually have time. You can swing trade those. And you can kind of do multiple trades. So say, so what I'm trying to say is, although you're looking at the stocks every day, that doesn't mean that you're going to be trading the same stocks in and out of them each day. Mm -hmm. You may enter a trade on Monday, sell that trade Wednesday, enter a different trade on Tuesday that you sell on Thursday. A lot of times you're not going to meet your goals in that same day. So you don't have to actually worry about that day trade rule on the same stock, even though you're making trades every day. Um, 
I skipped over some of y'all. I'm sorry. Hold on. <laughs> She's like, I'm, I'm attending talking. the conference November 16th. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Listen, you guys. What's up, Charm City Buyers? Hey. I should hey let guys. Charm City Buyers come on the show so come I can run out in. of And then you can bring her on. Oh, that'll work. How do I do that? I can show you. Okay. Stay um, on the phone, Kendra. That's Kira. I mean, sorry, Kiera. <laughs> sorry. Um, you know what? I love you and I know <laughs> you know what I meant. All right. Somebody <laughs> said, what are your thoughts on using life insurance as an investment? Uh, what do I think life insurance is a good thing to have, but it's not a way that I invest, so I can't comment on it. Look at Dorian, LOL story. No problem, Dorian. <laughs> How do you know when banks are buying or even interested in buying? There's it's formations, the yes, yeah, in the course, and there's formations that I teach you to look for in the chart. Uh, that one for options. Do you trade weekly or longer term with a longer expiration? So, um. Jabras, I actually teach this in the course too. There's different strategies that you're going to use depending on if you're buying an option or selling an option. So that's something that we cover in the VIP program of the course. First of all, everything by John about to get a no. Let me take both of y'all. Erica front of me when she was in New York City. I was trying to pick her brain on trucking. There is no picking my brain. There's no amount of food that you can use to pick my brain. The way you yeah, pick my brain yeah. is a pay for I'm paying for it. Thank you, Apple Mac. This is the end of the year bundle. Ken funding course group investment how to create an investment group tax liens and financial freedom starts in the basement why am i doing this now it's the last it's the end of the year sale but also we just talked about all saturday mm -hmm. people who are business minded know it's tax lien season it's tax deed season so while we're out buying tax liens buying tax deeds while we're out Building funding business. trading yeah this is why people say how many more events you're doing this year this is fourth quarter for business owners we're busy yeah, this is really like we're, we we're really busy, really busy giving you these events at the we're last trying to hit our goals yeah. for the end of the year. So, you know, this is like your last cool stuff. So does the 10 percent work for current trade and travel students that want the VIP course? No, um, if you already are in the course, there's already like you just upgrade for three thousand dollars if you're already in trade and travel. Mm -hmm. There's no next event for a while, Miss Rita. Right. You missed it. We'll see you next year in 2020. Uh huh. No problem. No problem. Hey, Terry just said about building your skill set even before you have a large amount of money to invest in gold. Um, so are you saying, what do I think about it? Um, gold is a decent asset class, but, yeah. but I also see that it's kind of like you're not getting a ton of return. You're just kind of putting your money to the place to yeah. hold. It's like a buy and hold. So it's all about what your strategy is. All right. My, fr my friends who day trade find it challenging to keep the balance above 25,000. They yeah, need to they make probably, some money. They, well, no, they need to take a course to learn how mm -hmm. to protect their risk management. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so guys, every time that you make a trade, you got to also prepare for what if I lose? And I feel like sometimes people just jump into a trade thinking it's going to be successful. That what if I lose piece, you got to have some risk management steps in there to protect your downside. If you keep that small, then you can actually make consistent gains. Okay, so for <clears throat> I think it was Christopher Catchins. Before I answer that, okay. the, the Philly event event that's happening has Rashana Scott, Asia oh, Selden, Asia Dennison from Detroit, Christina Wallace, which is real estate Bahamas. It's her IG. A developer out of Philly, a developer out of New York City, Terry Corser, which is a credit expert out of Philly, Heidi Becker, she's a title specialist and developer out of Philly. You have. Janelle Wilson, developer out of Philly. You have an affiliate attorney. You're going to have a Philly, Philly realtor, Tracy Powell. You have Lauren White, an interior decorator and designer out of Philly. You have a student loan repair specialist and Nicole Purby, an investor. So again, $99 Saturday, November 16th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. There's no reason if you live in Philly, man, that's that you shouldn't be there. All that, all those people. 99 to 100, the VIP ticket is 189 dollars. Still, that's there's like no less reason. Than Ten dollars a person. That's a lot of people in that and, thing. And here's the here's the really honest of it. If you if you're telling me you're serious, you want to make a million dollars in real estate business, whatever, mm -hmm. and you're not, you know, having one weekend you sacrifice because it's football season. You got to invest in yourself. Period. You've already told me what you thought of yourself. Not mm -hmm. much. Mm-hmm. Not much. Period. So that's on that. I'm actually probably gonna go to Philly and just be like, ah, I'm here. Surprise. No, <laughs> um Saturday, November 16th, though. That's enough. Th there read that one and then we're closing it out. So okay. So any trading tips to prepare us for the recession? Yes. One, I want you to start stacking up cash. 
Um, so as an investor, the way that I make money is I make 1% on my cash amount. That means I have to have cash to actually make some returns. So I want you to start building up your cash reserves. Two, I want you to take a course so that you can learn how, and I personally do suggest my course, uh, the trade and travel course, look it up at the link that Erica put. Um, but we have a whole class on risk management and I want you to get really good with risk management. So that's stuff like, how do you put in a stop loss order? How do you manage your a quantity size? How do you make sure that you're getting in um, not at the highs? How do you make sure that you're not having FOMO? Like there's a lot of both mental <laughs> things that you got to get over, like emotions as a trader. And there's some just formulas that you need to know to make sure that you protect your risk. So learn those things, build up your cash and then just be, oh, and also learn how to make money when the market goes down. So we have another whole class in my course in the VIP program that's about learning how to short sell. So that's making money when the market goes down, learning how to actually sell puts and do options. There's a lot of um, you can also sell calls. So just learn the skills so that when the recession comes, you'll make some money. Wow. Thank you for the twenty dollar super chat. I say that name. Emeka. Emeka on <laughs> on one productions. I appreciate it. Hello. Right. Hello. Um, hey. <laughs> I'm here her her language. Um, would it work in Canada? Thank you. Huh? Would the course work in Canada? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And the brokers that we use, so um, TradeStation works in most countries. So it works in Europe, it works here, it works most countries. Um, but in Canada, we also use uh, Ameritrade because they have mm -hmm. a Canadian office. Mm -hmm. And this one. Terry, do you teach how to buy stocks as an LLC? What are some pros and cons of stock trading as an individual versus a business? When you first start, Simone, I actually encourage trading as an individual. If you um, trade as a company, usually your fees are higher. And when you're first starting, you're probably not going to be making a whole bunch in the beginning. So start as an individual. When you see your gains rise, then you can decide to do it as an LLC. Day trading is psychological. Yes. 95% or more people lose money because they don't take <laughs> love that Terry's course and lose their shirt. There you go. <laughs> love that. All right, you guys, listen, you guys have been amazing. Thank you. I look forward to seeing the group, Valerie. Um, this is, this is it for the decade y'all. Wow. This is the end of a decade. And many of you are like, Oh, my kids are grown. They're getting out of the house. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm just, well, what's next? What's next? Man. What's next for you? Do you know? lots of fun stuff i'm not giving you out my blueprint <laughs> but i will be traveling a ton next year so yeah i can't wait for this next 10 years it's gonna be amazing so much better awesome. so much better so terry's information in your course available forever or limited time um actually the 10 percent off ends tonight so make sure you get it right away um enrollment for the course ends at the end of the month october is financial planning month so i said okay i'll leave it open for our financial planning month but we start classes tomorrow so I say get in now so you can be with us and not get behind and let's go. All right, you guys make the most of money when the market's down. I love it. You guys, what's up Alabama folks checking in, but look, your girl, Erica's got to go. There's 160 of y'all here. Make sure you hit that like button. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for making this decade amazing for both of us. And I'm going to do a part two video of, how to become a millionaire in a year because so many people whine because they want it. Yes. Give me step by step. Tell me what to do. I can't tell you what to do. Everybody's different, Everybody's but it's different. totally possible. You so can possible. totally become a millionaire in a year. Yeah. 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 They, they basically want to tell me each step and I'll just copy what you did. Mm. And you can't copy the sauce, baby. Because they cost a million dollars. That's where <laughs> you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. This is your girl, Erica, Classic Clown Blog. You guys have been amazing. Thank you. Thank you for everybody who came out to wow. Dallas this weekend. The event was Bam! It was like it hot was so fire. Fun. It was good. We went overtime by like 30 minutes. Erica kept talking. No, Terry ate up all my time. So I had to do my <laughs> end on the back end and then even cut it short. And I was like, dang, Terry, you're going to leave me an hour to speak up on the band? What's up? So, mm -hmm. anyway, you guys, you guys have a great day. Thanks for supporting the channel. <laughs> Bye. Did you see that?